Alright y'all, we're back to another one today. We about to react to Cod's Grove. We got when it suddenly becomes more than just a game. Before we get into the video, make sure you have to know these and subscribe. Let's go ahead and check it out. For some people, they consider basketball more than just a game. And when they say that, they usually mean it in a positive connotation. But on the flip side, that phrase can also have a darker meaning. In these three stories, you're going to find out that basketball isn't always all fun and games. Usually, when the month of April comes along, players have to mentally get ready for the playoffs. But in April of 2000, Marcus Canby not only had to prepare for the Knicks and Raptors first round series he was about to participate in, but he also had to deal with the fact that he was being sued by his former coach, who just so happened to be coaching on the other side. You see, just two days before that series was about to begin, Raptors head coach, Butch Carter, no relation to Vince Carter, but he is the older brother of Hall of Fame wide receiver Chris Carter, filed a defamation suit against Camby. And for those who don't know what that is, it's basically the act of communicating false statements about a person that damages the reputation of that person. And the reason mm -hmm. Butch Carter felt he had a case against Camby was because Camby called him a liar and also said that no players liked him. Now, what possibly caused Camby to say those things? Well, when it comes to the liar comment, according to Camby, Butch Carter promised him that he would have a future in Toronto. But Camby was traded from the Raptors to the New York Knicks just a few days later. He was traded for Charles Oakley right before the 1998-99 season. It was said that Carter tried... But that's how freaking all freaking... Um... That's how it is. That's how all GMs and freaking coaches, whatever, they lie to your face. Nothing ain't promised. They can tell you that, but really, if they can get something better, something better for something quicker to pick up, that's probably better than you at this time and at that moment, they're going to trade you. Unless you a big star, you're going to get traded. Nobody ain't safe. They can tell you all they want. They can say, they can say all the nice stuff they want about you. They want you to be a team, they want you to be a part of it, part of the part of the of this success and everything. And you gone just like that the next day. Or you finding out by hearing it about hearing it somewhere or by a friend or somebody to explain that he had no control over safe. any trades. But Camby didn't believe that. Now to the part where Camby said that his players basically hated him, he had this to say. Quote, no one likes him and no one wants to play for him. I don't trust him. I think a lot of guys don't trust him. I mean, the fact that the veteran players threatened to boycott the team's annual wrap-up dinner, which is normally a light-hearted event, until Carter promised them he would leave after a half hour, is a pretty strong piece of evidence that they didn't really have much love for their head coach. When Butch actually ended up staying a little longer, all the players began walking out. So despite some of Camby's comments actually being true, Carter still decided to sue him for defamation of character. Basically, if someone lies about you and that prevents you from getting a job, then you have a concrete defamation claim. But in this case, everyone already knew that the players didn't like him, and the liar comment could be looked at as just an opinion. Even if Camby had the intention of making him look bad, Carter couldn't point to any monetary damage from the statements. Just think about it. It's not unusual for players to diss their former coach after being traded. It happens all the time. But Butch Carter felt some type of way about Camby's comments, resulting in a lawsuit. 
The NBA is certainly no stranger to lawsuits, but a coach suing a player is just different. I mean, who wants to play for a coach that will sue you if you hurt his feelings? If anything, it looks like he ended up defaming himself. And listen to this. When players from both teams first heard about the lawsuit, they busted out laughing because of how ridiculous it was. All in all, Butch eventually ended up dropping the lawsuit due to the pressure he was receiving from the NBA. And as far as how that series turned out, Toronto would ultimately get swept by New York. In fact, during one of the games, it was reported that Camby went up to his former coach Butch Carter and whispered, You f when it's time for video game developers to see their new precious creation presented to the world, it's usually an exciting time for them because all of their hard work is about to pay off. That is, of course, if their marketing team does a good job convincing us to buy the game. Sega certainly thought they made a good enough trailer oh. to get us hyped for NBA 2K2 back in 2002. I but thought, I thought he was doing the ad. <laughs> I was like, oh, girl, we finally get this. He trying to get some money. But the only problem was, they hardly came up with the concept at all. Oh you see, when you this trailer dropped, video. Nike immediately noticed similarities what, between Sega's 2K2 commercial and their earlier commercial called Frozen Moment, featuring Michael Jordan in slow motion during a Bulls and Lakers game, which came out all the way back in 1996, a good amount of time before Sega's 2K2 trailer. In fact, Nike believed that they were almost too similar Here's what Nike had to say about this situation. Quote, Sega's new ad copies the sequence, theme, tone, characters, mood, pace, music, and setting of Frozen Moment. So with that being said, Sega left Nike no other choice but to file a lawsuit against them. Let's go ahead and compare the two ads for the hell of it. First of all, Nike's ad featured people running on treadmills. Sega's ad took the idea, but they had a hamster on a wheel instead. Nike had water Still spilling like over the meal. edge of a sink, while Sega had Gatorade spilling over the edge of a table. And many more details as well, clearly showing that Sega's ad was practically a shot-for-shot shot remake of Frozen thing. Moment. Okay. In order to settle this, person. Nike presented Sega with a whole laundry list of demands for them to do if they wanted to make things right. First, Nike demanded that Sega donate $100,000 to the Boys and Girls Club. Second, they were obviously not allowed to run that ad on TV ever again. Third, they had to issue an apology. And lastly, Nike asked for a royalty on every copy of the game that was sold. Sega's reputation definitely took a hit due to the drama that occurred from this legal battle, forcing them to learn a lesson Christ. not to steal other companies' style. Now, Nike isn't exactly immune to controversy either. The year was 2000. The Olympics were taking place. Nike would come up with an ad campaign that would debut during the games. The campaign was called Why Sport, which consisted of three commercials. One showed cyclist Lance Armstrong giving mouth to trunk resuscitation to a circus elephant that stopped breathing with the tagline, Why Sport? Healthy Lungs. The second one featured a skateboarder using his skills to escape from a gladiator with the tagline, why sport? You may run into a gladiator. But the third one called Horror wasn't like exactly sport, well not? received. It featured Olympic runner Susie Favor Hamilton getting ready for bed when all of a sudden a man wearing a hockey mask appears in the mirror. Jason. Oh my god. So naturally, she makes a run for it, leading to a chase scene outside in the woods. But instead of the same old cliche of a girl tripping and falling, she actually manages to get away because, again, she's an Olympic runner, leaving the bad guy completely exhausted and just gives up, with the tagline at the end saying, Why sport? 
you'll live longer. And this is the one that created a public outcry. When this commercial that played during the Olympics, was NBC was bombarded with angry phone calls and emails from the viewers watching at home. So NBC had no other choice but to pull it, refusing to run the commercial during the Olympics. Neither of the other two commercials were pulled by NBC, but of course, due to the complaints that the horror one received, it had to go. People were saying that it encouraged violence against women. Parents said that the ad had no business running during the Olympics because they feared that it would give their children nightmares. Nike couldn't believe that NBC took their commercial off the air. After all, really NBC themselves were the ones who approved of the commercial in the first place. It was just supposed to be a parody of a slasher movie, but apparently they should have chose to debut it somewhere else other than the Olympics. I don't think it was that bad. She literally just ran away, so not like he caught her and killed her or something. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. I guess maybe for you with some kids, but shoot, I'm pretty sure they were watching scary. Y'all be watching scary movies and stuff anyway. You know, actually doing killing. You got she got away and ran from them, so not like it ain't too bad. I don't know, but all right, make sure y'all like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next one.